guys, Long Haul Larry, Big Blue. We are actually over here at uh, this Flying J on our way to deliver our load tomorrow and um, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm going to try to get some work done on the truck and everything, doing some install and maybe the horn and some other things. But one of the things that has been an issue is my APU has not been working for a little bit. I've been trying uh, yesterday and uh, today I've been actually trying to find a Thermal King place that is open. Um, I do need to um, um, replace a, the lower hose. I replaced the top hose and now the lower hose is just leaking a little bit. So I'm just going to replace it. Um, thought about just trying to tighten things up and stuff. It's just a small leak, but I think I'm just going to replace it. That way it's both hoses. If one went out, the other one's probably going to go out soon anyways. So I'm just going to replace it soon. Um, I'll probably do that tomorrow. But I've been getting a code on my thing and I want to show it to you guys. Right here's my panel that's back in the sleeper. And you can see right there I have a red triangle and that ACS is lit up. The APU will run just for a little while. Doesn't it's trying or no, that's a truck going by. It will run for a little while, fans will kick on and everything, but it never cools. So I have been checking fuses and everything because in the past this has happened to me and I found it to be a 20 it's a, a, a fuse and uh, it comes from the factor I think it's a 10 amp fuse that's in there and the recommendation is to put a 25 amp fuse in there and I did that and I've checked the fuse and the fuse is good so let's go see what I just found well this is my side back side box guys and this is my controller here for the APU um, the fuse that it is is right here it's F12 or whatever that's the fuse that would blow out and I guess it was a 20 amp fuse and they recommend putting a 25 amp fuse in it. I've checked in there already and that's okay. But I'm going to actually hook up the diagnostics and see if I can find out what's going on. And it's pretty easy actually. You come with this cord. This cord hangs out here. It's got a USB connector on it. So I brought my computer out here. And what you do is just plug in the USB connector and it automatically detects it. Now I don't know how good this camera is going to pick this up, but it brings up and it says Tripack Evolution D. That's in the drive right there. And then you want to go to Start Windows Batch File. So you go down there and you click on that. And it brings it up to a to a uh, to the website or whatever for the TriPack Evolution. It has system system monitoring. You can have, uh, mess with the program settings, service test, alarm, software upgrade, unit setup tools. And right now it's loading all the values and stuff of everything. As long as the controller is on, it'll communicate with the computer and put everything in there and um, do it. Now you can go over here. And I have an alarm, and you can click on alarm, and it says loading alarms. So, while this is all going and everything, I'll tell you what I did. Is I put my computer up here just to let it go and do its thing, and do what it needs to do. Then I was walking back here, and I was just looking around, and I was like, what's going on? And I looked up. I think I figured out my whole problem. <laughs> The wire got broke by this here. Must have caught this and broke this wire here. And I swear I looked at that fan to make sure I did not see that wire. So I'm gonna fix that wire and I bet you anything that's my whole problem right there. So I got some uh, shrink connectors with me and everything and I'll just uh, fix up that wire and be good to go probably. We'll see. All right guys, we got this all spliced together. Um, I actually had to go buy some wire <laughs> I had to buy it at the truck stop. It was like $9. So I wasn't going to buy red and black. <clears throat> it's good enough. Um, but what I've done is the black, the red wire was cut, but the black wire was actually like shaved and all messed up and stuff. And they didn't have any connectors in there and all I had was the yellow ones. The blue ones are for the single wire, but it's fine. But um, I want to show you guys this. I bought this at a Pilot. I bought this like a month ago. I saw this. I always loved the little torches and stuff. 
But I've bought a bunch of nice torches and they never work. This one here I bought at a pilot. It sits up on the front counter at the checkout. And it's like a little gimmicky thing. It's got like a bottle opener here. It's got a flashlight on the bottom and stuff. But I tell you what, this thing works. It really works well. And it's like 13 bucks and I was able to use it for heat shrink and everything. It holds in the wind and stuff. They're $12.99 called Thunder or Turbo Blue. But they got them at the Pilots. But I got all the heat shed connectors on there and what I did is I lengthened the wires because I'm gonna have it so it's down here like this and put some zip ties on so it comes straight down because I know what broke this was this here. And this moves back and forth and that wire was right here. So that's why I caught it and broke it. So I'm going to put a zip tie, I'm trying to get this out of my way, down like here through this fan shroud Put a zip tie so it's right here and then have this going right down so it's out of the way because that thing is over here you can see where, where it hits it scratches it up so i'm going to get that out of the way so it doesn't do it again but i got everything with uh the corrosion material in there the heat shrink connectors on there got it all wired up and then just for a little bit of adder protection i'm going to actually wrap this whole thing with electrical tape just so it doesn't fray or nothing else And then I'll zip tie it to that bar there so it's down further, so it's out of the way. So I'll get this done and then we'll fire it up and see if it works. Well, right, guys, I have it all fixed up. Got the wire run down there so it won't be hitting anymore. Fan is running. I've had it running for about 10 minutes now. Everything seems to be going good. I got the tri pack um, hooked up through the coat, through the wire here. And basically right now I'm just running system monitoring around here just to check everything out, seeing how everything is going. It's running service tests. You see it's coming up with its information. Um, I'm gonna go in here to programmable settings and mess around with it a little bit. You can change all kinds of stuff with this just by going right here. All you gotta do is plug it in a computer, it automatically uploads it right to it. You just have to have a Wi-Fi signal. You gotta be on the internet. So on to the next. All right guys, we got our train horn. Let's take a look at this thing. Uh, this is the one I got. It's the same company as the one that I got last time, the Grand General train horn. The last one was a four bell. This one's only a three bell, but I'll show you the reason why I bought it. The other one kind of fell all apart. So there it is. It's real good solid metal. I sat there and looked at them and all and everything. And it's pretty, it's really good solid metal. And the thing is, is that the other one, it wasn't built as tough up here. It was just kind of flimsy and stuff. This one here was a lot tougher. And um, this one here has this bracket right here that's gonna hold these on here. The only thing is it doesn't hold this horn. Um, I'm gonna see if it comes loose if it does in the future I might build like a little piece of metal or something comes off here and wraps around this one, too Which I'm not sure why they didn't do that But I'm gonna be mounting this in the same spot back there and um, we'll mount this up And I'm also gonna be pulling off this electronic solenoid right here I found that it is much louder if you just pull this off and just put a fitting on here and just wire it in direct and get rid of this, uh, this little thing. The main reason why is because if you look at it, this little cylinder, you know, you got the air going in there, but this is how big the hole is. So it doesn't matter. You could have a two inch air line coming in here, but this is all the flow that's gonna let, that's all the air that's gonna let go in there. So it really restricts it. So we get rid of a little electric. I got another one of these if anybody wants a little electric solenoid. <laughs> You know what? I wonder if I could rig that up for my air dump or something. Hmm, I'll have to think about something like that. But we'll figure this out and mount this thing up. Well, guys, we are coming into our delivery point in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, I actually.
actually didn't get the horn installed. I tried to I put it up there and I thought it would bolt right up to the other one since it was kind of the same manufacturer. But the bracket is completely big. It's a lot bigger, a lot bigger. So I gotta make a backing plate, some kind of steel backing plate to make it work. I can't do that out here, so I'm gonna have to wait till I get home. So I'll have to install that the next time I'm at the house. So basically all I did was uh, the APU and stuff and messed around and then I was able to get a little bit of sleep. And I'm actually running a little behind this morning. I am uh, about five minutes late. I don't think it's a big deal because they don't even open the gate here until five. Usually there's trucks. That's like a downshift. And there's usually trucks all sitting in a line waiting to get into place, so. We'll see. Haha, <laughs> really? There's no trucks. to let you guys go. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day, great night as they're watching this here video. And if you're not, well, we'll certainly change all that around. Try it all over again tomorrow. I will catch you guys later. See ya.